Uh, first of all, thank you. And uh, you said that uh, film comes from circus more than anything else. And I would love for you to elaborate on that. Why do you think that? I'm not sure I was right when I said that. I mean, I, <laughs> it's to me, you know, it's um, circus as, as an adventure, something you experiment, you put out the tent for one day or two in a week, you try something and then you move on. Um, <coughs> and of course, there's a film, an old film that's famous called Freaks by Todd Browning about a circus members and um, I was very, I thought this was kind of wonderful, the, the idea of a, you know, a traveling with people and, and creating something with weird people because that's what Freaks is about and that's how I feel. I, I always felt I was one freak. I feel Denis is a freak. Uh, I felt I've, I've filmed a few freaks and I've worked with a few freaks. Um, but freaks together have a certain strength. Uh, and uh, I was very lucky, I feel, to have met a few of them, a few freaks, because you can't make a film alone. I can't make a film alone. Maybe someone could, some people can, I don't know. So you have to be two or three or four. It can be a lover, it can be a, you know, a friend who's a producer. There's got to be two, three people, and then you, you know, you, you found um, a trapezist or, or a dancer or a clown or, you know, um, and you go on and you go on. So um, for sure, you know, cinema didn't come from theater, didn't come from literature. There's photography in the circus in my mind. Uh, I could say music, because I feel that it's very close to making music, but that's a night, another dimension. Hello, good night. Uh, there is a scene in, in that movie, in a car, where a free person singing and one dying, and uh, that reminds me of the scene from uh, Bent Apart, and also Juliette Binoche looks a bit, looks uh, like Anna Karina. And is it like was done on purpose or is there some subconscious of Godard in the air? I don't remember, but I know, I mean, Juliette is called Anna in the film. The first cinema person I met when I came to Paris was Anna Karina. And, uh, I'd imagined a film for her, and I never got the money uh, uh, for this film called Déjà Vu. So I was very uh, taken by Anna Garina for sure. And then at that same time, around you know, 17, 18 years old, I discovered cinema. Oh, that's also the time where I really understood there was someone behind a film, there was someone who, you know, it wasn't, because when I was a kid I would see films for actors and actresses. Uh, I didn't really know there were directors. Uh, so, and at the time, directors were men. I mean, there were almost zero uh, women directors. The director was a man filming a woman basically, Bergman or Godard or Bresson, they were all filming. Um, um, uh, and since I didn't know anyone and I, I was, I didn't talk at the time, I felt, okay, with the camera, maybe I can, I can talk to, to, a, to a woman, I can, uh, you know, so I'm sure um, all these, important relationships between directors and actresses, whether Hitchcock or Godard or, or others, uh, inspired me at the time. 
and now? Now you are in your own. You inspire people now, you know that. You inspire a lot of the directors all over the, the world. The, t the thing changed. What? Well, I discovered, because as a young man I would film my lovers, but I discovered that, you know, in a way I needed them more than they needed me. It was a, what goes on around the camera, I was, um, so it was, I don't know, how do you say in English, muse, muse? This idea of the muse, you know, that's very, old idea of the news. Um, I, th I think I, I had some kind of fantasy about it, but soon I found out that without, you know, in a way, when you film someone, he's looking or she's looking at you. Um, and she's creating you in a way. Uh, or he, because I had a big, long relation with Denis also, three, three or four or five films. Um, and that, yeah, so that changes over time. You had the same, uh, and I, uh, now I have a daughter, now, you know, I would never want her to be a muse to someone, uh, so uh, it changes even more. Uh, hi. Hi, hello. Uh, thank you for the movie. Uh, I really, really loved it. I think I understand like 20% French and uh, maybe 15 Portuguese, but still I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, your movies, uh, not this one. I don't know why it skipped uh, my mind. So it was really, really a nice surprise. And uh, I remember seeing uh, the first movie of yours uh, that I saw was Holy Motors. And I really, really loved it. I remember that I was asleep and uh, I didn't really understand much of it. I was half asleep and I, I used to sleep and then again, I saw something. But I remember that I said, okay, this is one of the best thing I've ever seen. I don't know why I'm asleep, but uh, I'll see it again. And then I had a couple of chances to see it again. I didn't want to, I still haven't. Um, because uh, I remember when I saw it, it was like a mystery and it was always like a mix of um, uh, very, very beautiful shots, um, uh, like also in this one, I saw a lot of juxtaposition between very beautiful choreographed shots and then a lot of careless, at least uh, seemingly careless shots and so on. And even on this movie, Holy Mothers, I remembered I had the same feeling that most of it was uh, very, very beautiful, but there were some parts which was um, maybe on purpose, uh, kind of brutal, kind of uh, maybe we can say uh, not very beautiful or uh, even, I don't know, uh, evil or in some ways, or even the character himself. So um, I, I feel like uh, I'm personally drawn to such kind of movies. Maybe it links to also freaks and the weirdos or what you also mentioned before. But do you also think about, sorry, it's a long answer, uh, long question, so I don't know how to put it in words, but do you think about it when you are into your, I don't know, a creative process that you need this kind of juxtaposition between the really beautiful, aesthetic, I don't know, kind of feeling and even on the shots, and some kind of um, brutal, evil, I don't know how to put it, or is it like just a flow and y you go with it, so? I think you can, you can sleep through my films. Uh, <laughs> there's a, I'm not a storyteller, so you, so you know, you can, um, and then, Obviously, when, especially in this film the, the, that you saw tonight, same thing with we talk about poetry, or now with you know colors or with composing a shot. There was you know there was a lot of that too much of you know you as you want you want uh, this this toy cinema toy and you want to exploit it you want to create and you want to. Um, and then I got sick of it because I thought, okay, I, you know, I can, I need some freedom. I don't, I don't need to, uh, to know what I'm doing that much. And that's why I made the, this third film, which was all outdoors, 
which is difficult because like a Western, when you're outdoors, it's hard to film, it's hard to cut, you know, if nobody opens the door, there's no phone calls, you, you don't know where to cut. Um, so, and then I guess I've always been, when I feel I know too much what I'm doing, I'm, I get worried, so. Uh, and it happens in every shooting, a uh, point where, you, especially when you start the film, the shooting, you, there's a tension, even with actors, everything is too studied, everything is too, you know, too composed, so you have to shake it. Um, and it, it creates a film, hopefully, but uh, only, you know, really big masters like Hitchcock, maybe, can really, because also he had this art of storyboard and stuff, you know, it, it's like everything is composed. Uh, and I can't do that, and I, I don't want to do that. I couldn't do it if I wanted to, but. But you, during the, the shooting, you change a lot what you thought from the beginning, or you we keep uh, we keep very close to what you had. Uh, you take things from the actors. You do things like that. You change because of something, or you are more or less what you when you shoot is exactly more or less where uh, where you, you prepare it and you written before. Uh, I don't know. For sure, there's no improvis improvisation. Um, sometimes you know you change stuff during the night or the in the morning or you change dialogues but that's not very important um no there's um you have to feel um i mean i have to feel um when i'm liberated from that, these first moments. That's why when I shot in, this is shot on film. My, I think my four first films I shot on film. <coughs> and then I went to digital. And when I was filming on film, we had dailies, rushes, they called. Uh, every night you go and see what you did the day before, you shot the day before. And I, w I would wa watch and, and, and I would want to remake everything. So my shootings were getting longer and longer and more expensive, of course. Um, until my th third film where <laughs> we couldn't stop shooting anymore. So when I came back and I started with digital with um, Holy Motors, oh, a little before Holy Motors, I made a little film in Japan. Tokyo, yeah. My, my DP, my who made this film and my three first films had died, and I decided I would never do film anymore. I mean, film on film. <coughs> and I decided I would never watch dailies anymore. So, of course, it meant I went much faster and accepted whatever I had to work with, whatever I'd done, you know, whether it was good or bad, uh, and that changed a lot. Uh, my way of working, yeah. Other question? Yeah. Yeah, hi. Um, so with Holy Motors, I've seen that movie several times, and every time I watch it, the end has a different effect on me. Like, the first time I saw it, the kind of surreal dichotomy between this, like, um, kind of advertisement-ready domestic home that Denis, Denis Levant returns to, and the fact that his family are chimpanzees, um, seemed like very funny and surrealistic and just kind of gallingly wonderful. And then I've seen it on other occasions where the end strikes me as just incredibly tragic, and I'm crying. <laughs> and I always just thought I would take advantage of the fact that I could ask you, since you're here, what like, tell me, can you talk about that ending and how you came up with it and, like, what emotional register you sort of pictured it hitting in for the, for the viewer of the movie? Um, what I remember is that, so I imagine, well, for people who haven't seen the film, it's complicated. To, okay, so the, the, the man at the end of the day, we've seen him through very different stages, different ages, different 
all that in the same day. Dif different jobs, different everything. But at night, we think he's going back home, finally, he's to some home. And I start to casting who, who will be his wife. Uh, I thought he, he'd have a wife and two kids, maybe. And I started casting, you know, who could be his wife and these two kids. And, uh, I'm very bad at casting. I, I, I hate casting. Uh, I think it's a completely unnatural <laughs> process. So, and then I thought this is completely stupid because um, I can't create, you know, this. Uh, the idea is, is it's not as this specific woman and these kids. It's going back home. It's like what what is going back home? So I thought. Forget people, let's take the monkeys. Um, he's going back to monkeys, and maybe we'll get this feeling that's his normal life. He's going to kiss his wife and put them to bed or whatever. <coughs> it will be, and I won't have to do casting. Um, and that's what I did. Bonsoir. Uh, first, thank you. And I wanted to ask something since we talked about Holly Motors, poetry, and talk about looking into people's eyes. I think back in 2012, when you dropped Holly Motors, you were talking about how worried you are that uh, cameras became too small. But then tonight, you talked about, again, you, may, you used the word toy to mention uh, cameras. And Holly Motors was now 11 years ago. So I just wanted to ask you, um, what's up with this now? With small, are you still using smaller and smaller cameras? And what you uh, what are your thoughts about this? You know, I, I, I made a short film when I was 18, I think, M my first real short film that I finished, and with the biggest camera I ever had, Mitchell, which is, you know, famous old, um, big and heavy. And uh, I loved it, but uh, and then of course every film the camera was smaller until we got to digital, where they had cameras and more little, little computers. So, but um, it's not <coughs> I don't like to be nostalgic, so I, I'd rather be either angry or furious. <laughs> um, so I, you know, that's why I decided. Okay, digital. I don't watch anything anymore, and this is my new way of doing. Um, and it it has other excitements. I'll always, in a way, regret film, but the fact that this friend DP had died um, for me, you know, color and film, in the old sense, was him, my, my, our work together, my, our relation. So. I knew I couldn't do it with some, someone else anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, tomorrow we'll go on with this and we'll talk here, maybe with uh, what you are doing now. Thank you, Leos. Merci. À demain.